And then I would like to invite Team Glasgow from Scotland on stage. Give them a round of applause, please. Cheers. How that change slides? Just back and forth. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. So hi there, my name is Nat and this is Theodore and we're from Team Glasgow. Um, I'm going to be presenting and he'll be answering the difficult questions. Um, so just a, a little bit about translatability in terms of what it can do. So we've already know that NT probe MP is very useful in acute heart failure and it could be useful in chronic heart failure with chronic measurements as well. Um, but with a bit of research we've also discovered that it could actually potentially predict future cardiovascular disease in the healthy population uh, and it could be even more useful than LDL cholesterol. So this is an, a market, a large market that we would look to explore. In terms of translatability research, sorry, Where? sorry. Um, so we gained ethical approval for questionnaires and directed them to uh, healthcare professionals and the public, the public at the Science Centre event on the right hand side. Uh, so the healthcare feedback was very useful, so we got lots of feedback and particularly cardiologists tend to be, um, give full explanations of why things were useful, why things weren't. So for example here, uh, a cardiologist is saying that it would be very useful for GPs for detecting acute heart failure, but a biosensor wouldn't be so useful for paramedics to detect acute heart failure. Uh, in terms of public feedback, again, it was interesting that they would be willing to pay a, a decent price for a biosensor that predicted future cardiovascular risk, and they were also willing to pay a good price for a, a biosensor that actually helps them if they had heart failure. So, In terms of translating a prototype, we have four phases, uh, which I'll talk you through, but basically it starts from phase zero, which is the prototype just now, to phase three, which involves multi-analyte detection. Uh, so phase one, basically we had dis discussions with industry experts such as SODX uh, and currently the device is made from lithium niobate or that's the piezoelectric substance uh, and it's the most costly material of it and it costs about £100 per device in our labs including Dyson raw materials. Uh, decreasing the dimensions of this would take it to around £20 per device so this would be what we're doing initially. Uh, other manufacturing processes such as injection moulding techniques over 3D laser print would also be introduced for the cartridges. Uh, and an initial investment in terms of we would give it to healthcare professionals and then once they've used the device we would take it back, strip it and refunctionalize it and then give it back to them and a recycling process would save a lot of cost and phase one would allow us to kind of get our name out there, our brand out there while we develop the further phases. So phase two we go from using wafers of lithium niobate to using zinc oxides which would bring the cost substantially down. Uh, and the, there's a thin plastic layer on top that helps guide the wave called PMMA uh, and that could be conjugated into sheets and produced uh, kind of mass manufactured uh, and there's currently no one doing that just now we've done a free to, freedom to operate search. Um, so therefore initial device investment in terms of giving them out would be recouped by giving, selling the devices for about two to five pounds to healthcare professionals in the public. Uh, and from our public questionnaire, they most were willing to pay two to five pounds or more for, per test, based on one test a week. Uh, in terms of phase three of our translation, uh, we would like to conjugate, instead of just the one antibody onto the detection layer, we would conjugate layers of separate antibodies. So for example, troponin, nt MP, CRP, uh, that are useful in heart failure. Uh, and we would be able to kind of take measurements, strip, take measurements, strip, and detect them all in the same device. And we also developed a quick uh, user interface prototype. So lots of the, uh, the public it was spoke to requested that there be a smartphone app associated with it. Um, so this could enable if their patients to keep a record of their weight, their uh, fluid balance, and also work to NT Pro BMP targets. So in conclusion, we've done quite a bit of research done quite a bit of research uh, and engaged with the public and healthcare professionals through questionnaires. We've developed the phases zero to three. Uh, phases 0 and 1 would be rolled out initially with the recycling process and then 2 and 3 after uh, analysis and tests would then be rolled out probably in about 5 years time overall. Uh, we've developed the mock app 
um, and we've got exciting ideas for phase three for the multi-analyte detection. Um, so thanks a lot for your time. If there's any questions. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And you also said that it would be cheaper by uh, picking other materials. Yep. Are you using those materials now? Or do you want to use them? Is it feasible? Okay, um, so we would bring them. I'll repeat the question, sorry. Um, so, what the gentleman was asking is basically are we using the materials we talked about using in the future just now, and is it feasible, and how we would bring the price down? So, the initial way we would bring the price down is by reducing the dimensions. So, as we're cutting it just now, we're cutting it quite large. Um, but that, that could be reduced to bring the price down to about twenty pounds per cartridge. I'm not sure that, how much that is in euros, but quite a lot just now probably. Um, and in terms of the zinc, the zinc oxide, the second material we'd like to use, there's not as much evidence. There's evidence of its efficacy, but it's not used as much as the lithium niobate. Um, so we'd be, we would be looking to develop that ourselves. I don't know if you got into that. Um. <clears throat> also. Uh, the lithium nabit has a higher yield uh, right now, and that's why we used it. Uh, the other uh, uh, material is a glass substrate with uh, zinc oxide thin film, and this is what makes it uh, the, uh, drives down the cost. However, it, uh, right now it has a, a lower yield, and uh, more research is needed to be done to produce um, good functioning devices, uh, a higher number on, on, of good functioning devices per batch. Yes, please. Uh, the gentleman asked if we need temperature control uh, on our device. Uh, yes, uh, lithium nitrate has a, temperature, uh, a high temperature coefficient, so it is uh, um, temperature changes affected. That's why we use two devices uh, in our cartridges to. Um, compensate for uh, uh, the changes that happen uh, on, on the substrate only from temperature. Which the one is used as control, and you you measure the difference as well. Um, any other questions? No. Thank you for your attention, and please vote for us. <laughs>